Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're watching a speed event. That was Banneker High School's first craft, where they did their speed competition. They were timed at the end of the course is the judge with a stopwatch who gives the, the team their time for the speed course. It's imperative to keep the craft as straight as possible while you're doing the speed course. That cuts down on the amount of time that it takes to get from one end of the course to the other. Okay, in the first attempt for the speed competition, Banneker came in at just over 26 seconds. And here you can see where the bracket board is set up. And as the teams advance through the competition, they'll advance on the bracket board for a overall winner. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a second speed competition. You can see that was pretty quick. These speed competitions can be pretty quick. And all the teams have to do is go in a straight line. And there's the judge right there with a timer, making sure that they get the correct time for the crafts as they come down the straight line and travel the length of the court, of the course, which is 15, I mean 25 meters, the length of a basketball court. And you can see the guys carrying their craft back to the starting line. Saves on some wear and tear on a craft so they can compete in other parts of the competition. Apparatus that you're looking at right here is a junction box that the teams plug into to power up their crafts. It's something that was uh, designed by Mr. Joseph Buffington, who was the creator of this competition, and it travels with him to all of the competition sites. It's very handy because it allows the teams to plug in without having a whole bunch of cords all over the place. They can just plug into this junction box and they can compete. So here's another team gearing up for the speed competition. Going the length of the basketball court, 25 meters, with the judges at the end timing. This must have been a trial run right here. They didn't compete. They didn't go all the way down the course. Maybe they're just getting a trial run in. They have to make sure that they have enough cord length and things of that nature. So, and there are lots of technical things going on here. Sometimes there's some difficulties, but they work through them. We're going to take a short pause here while we gear up for the next team to come up for the speed competition. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chattahoochee competing right now in the speed competition. Okay, we're going to take a short pause here while we get ready for the next team. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back from that break in the action, and the next team is set up for their speed competition. Okay, we're setting up for the next competition here. We're going to take a short pause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in action here with Northview High School in the speed competition. Looks like they're having a few technical difficulties ironed out right now.
Looks like they're back in the race again. So it'll be time. Up to the end of the course, which will be the length of the basketball court. That's 25 meters, approximately. Okay, looks like they're off and hovering again. I'm not sure what they're going to do in Northview. Looks like they're stalled right now. So we'll see how this works out. We're going to take a slight pause here, and we'll be right back to the action. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to the action now. It looks like Innovation Academy is up next. Here we go. Let's see what they're doing here. And they're doing very well coming down the speed course here. Let's see what their time comes in at. Very good run by Innovation Academy, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to wait to see what their time. Okay, the judges seem to be going over to the bracket board to give out the information to see what the time was. The judge is talking to the board keeper to make sure that he's uh, recording all of the correct times for the competition. For Innovation Academy came in at 11.54. That's a very good, that's a, probably, that's a new record for the competition this year, Innovation Academy, with a new record of 11.54 for the speed competition, which is 25 meters approximately the length of the basketball court. So, so far we've had competition from Johns Creek. We've had competition from Banneker High School, competition from Chattahoochee High School, Innovative Academy. So once again, the schools competing today are Banneker High School, Chattahoochee High School, Johns Creek High School, Northview High School, and Innovation Academy. Competing in this year's 2022 Hovercraft competition being hosted here at Northview High School. And while we're taking a little break in the action, ladies and gentlemen, just want to share a little bit of information about the competition that has been going on here since 2008. The first competition back in 2008 was won, overall, was won by Chattahoochee High School in 2008. I'll also give you a little bit of information about the competition itself. This, the history of the Hovercraft competition. This competition dates back to 2007 when the students, students of Mr. Joseph Buffington, who was an engineering instructor at Banneker High School, built the first functional leaf blower hovercraft in his engineering class. He tossed around the idea of a hovercraft competition with now retired instructor Mr. Dwayne Belcher at Westlake High School. Mr. Greg Mervich at Chattahoochee High School and Steve Swigart at Alpharetta, Alpharetta High School. This was the beginning of a yearly hovercraft competition that many students have participated in and continued their engineering studies in at least one of several of the engineering disciplines surrounding the hovercraft. Each year the competition is held at a different high school. Okay, so now we're going to take another pause for the cause. We're going to take a little break here while we're setting up for the next competition. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back in action here. We have some judges going over some updates for the competition right now. We're at the end of the speed competition, so they're going to... Bracket for figure eight. That brings innovation. So here is the number one seat. 
Okay, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the judge just went over how the brackets will be formulated and how the advancement will take place. So next in the competition will be the figure eight competition. Go around, cross back through, and finish on this side of the cone. To start these races, we'll set that side up, it's not set up yet. To start these races, I will stand in the middle. I will give a thumbs up on one side. Once you say yes, I will raise that hand. We'll give a thumbs up on the other side. We now have both hands. Then I'll go three, two, one, and drop both arms at the same time. That's when the people let go of the crap and you start going. Okay, so once again, they'll start on what will be here to the close side of the cone. Come down the course. Go around this first cone that you see. Put, putting that original cone back on their left side to complete a figure eight. And that will be the competition course for the figure eight competition which is about to take place now. Okay ladies and gentlemen we're back from that pause for the cause and right now we're setting up for the figure eight competition. It seems they've made some adjustments and now there are going to be two teams competing simultaneously and it'll be Johns Creek and Northview High School competing at the same time in the figure eight course which will be taking place shortly. Both teams are gearing up making sure their crafts have their last minute preparations done teams getting ready making sure the judges and all of the proper cones are in place once this is done then they'll start the competition and for this competition as I stated before it will be between Johns Creek and Northview High School and this will be the figure eight competition for this year's 2022 hovercraft competition you have a lot of power cords here and you don't want any tangling up with the power cords. They have, sometimes they have to manually lift their, their crafts into position so that they can have them in the proper place to compete in the races. But they're light. And one thing about the crafts that I should mention is that the crafts are designed, built, and operated by the students. There's adult supervision, but the actual hands-on of the design, building, and operating of the craft is all done by the students. And while we're setting up for this next competition, we're going to take one more pause for the pause, ladies and gentlemen, and we will be right back to the action. While we're still waiting for the next two crafts to be uh, started in this competition, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to go over give you some more trivial information about the competition and, and we've been mentioning the word hovercraft here several times throughout this competition so far but what is a hovercraft you might ask well a hovercraft is a vehicle or craft that travels over land or water on a cushion of air provided by a downward blast so if you pay close attention to the crafts themselves you'll see that the designs have leaf blowers and these leaf blowers are a propulsion for the crafts and if you notice on this one right here it's got a bladder on the bottom that the black material that you see on the bottom and you can see the actual leaf blowers and they are the propulsion for the hovercraft and once the leaf blowers are turned on the bladder fills with air and it also has a port on the bottom to push air out so it inflates the bladder, lifts it up off the ground, and allows the, the craft to be propelled across the, across the course. So, oh, correction, that's Northview and Chattahoochee that is competing right now. So Northview High School over to my far right, and Chattahoochee on the far left on the far end of the course. Both teams look like they're just about ready. The judges are in place. And the judges will also have uh, caution flags that they'll wave in the event that for some reason during this course of the competition, a craft uh, 
doesn't maneuver around the cones properly because there is a penalty for bumping onto the cone, not going around the cone in the proper figure, moving the cone, and if they get stuck on the cone, only a judge is allowed to dislodge a craft from being stuck on a cone. Team members are not allowed to touch the craft once the craft has left the starting gate. Looks like Chattahoochee is trying to get the last kinks out of their, their craft right now. A lot of times these cords get tangled up, so they have to unravel them. Make sure they have a lengthy cord unraveled to complete the court to complete the courses. A lot of maneuvering and calculation goes into these competitions. These students start sometimes in the fall semester of the year as far as designing their crafts and use the fall semester to also build their crafts so that by the spring semester that we're in right now all they have to do is practice maneuvering their craft learning how to steer it and adjusting for certain thrusts and speed more or less just practicing after the cone after the crafts have been built so this competition even though it takes place on one day in the spring semester it's months in preparation we're still in a holding pattern for this next competition, the race of the, the figure eight race. So while they're working out the kinks, we're gonna take one more pause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It looks like Chattahoochee's fired up. Their craft is ready. I see their bladder is full. Looking over at Northview, looks like their bladder is full too, so team away and they're off ladies and gentlemen Johns Creek Chattahoochee is over to the far left and here comes down here comes Northview as they maneuver down the course you see them headed towards their first cone they go to the outside of it coming around to make that figure eight as you can see they don't want to touch the cone at all so they're making their way around the cone to configure a figure eight. Judges are standing by to make sure if there's any infraction as far as the touching of cones, they will be penalized. It looks like Northview has successfully made it around the first cone and is headed back towards the starting line. Once again, they have to go to the outside of that last cone and head straight on in and they're almost at the finish line it looks like they're going to win this part of the competition for the figure eight race so Northview has just won the first leg of the figure eight race ladies and gentlemen let's check on Chattahoochee and see what their situation is okay they're still in the race they're having some difficulties there they have to touch a cone but the judges will of course deduct whatever points they need for that and they're just trying to get back on the course to complete the course okay looks like they're uh, driving a car or anything like that uh, the thrust ratio has to be properly aligned and steering it is not always the easiest thing in Chattahoochee just crossed the finish line, ladies and gentlemen. So now the judges are going to assess this first figure eight race and total it up and go to our bracket board. And in the meantime, we're going to take a short pause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from our short break. The judges are setting up the tables with the trophies that will be awarded after the competition. And two more crafts are being set up for the figure eight competition. It looks like uh, Banneker is one of the teams that's set up for this next competition for the figure eight portion of the hovercraft competition for today. It looks like Johns Creek and Banneker will be going head to head in the next figure eight competition. Johns Creek is going to be the team to the far left over there. 
and the clean team closest to us by the table where the trophies are, are located. That is Banneker High School. That is one of the two teams that Banneker High School has brought here for the competition. They, they actually built two different hovercrafts. Over the years, many, many schools have competed in this competition. As a matter of fact, in the previous years, middle schools and high schools have actually competed in the competition at the same time. And just some of the schools, well here's a list of schools that have participated in the competition over the years. And this goes back to 2008. McNair Middle School, Haynesbridge Middle School, Northview High School, Chattahoochee High School, Tri-Cities High School, of course Banneker High School where the competition originated, Johns Creek High School, Alpharetta High School, Osborne High School, West Lake High School, Centennial High School, Langston Hughes High School, Creekside High School, West Hall Middle School, and this year we have Innovative Innovation Academy, which is a brand new participant in the competition. The competition started in 2008 and has gone strong all the way up until 2019 and of course when the pandemic uh, set in we had two years of inactivity and that was in 2020 and 2021 so now we're trying to get it back in in the flow and this is year 15. so right now it looks like both teams are ready and they are off looks like Johns Creek is headed out first, going around the first cone, and here comes Banneker, a little slow getting out of the gate, but nonetheless they're getting out of the gate, sometimes these things have a mind of their own, let's go back to Johns Creek to see what they're doing. Trying to get around that first cone. They're having some difficulty making making a proper turn on that first cone. Here comes Spanaker. They're going to make their first reach their first cone to make that first turn around the cone. And at the same time, they're having some, some difficulties too. Both teams are at the first cone, trying to make the first maneuver so that they can head back towards the starting line. Downs Creek is to the far side there. They finally made it on the proper side of the cone to make their turn to head back towards the starting line. See Mr. Bufferton over there, he's also one of the judges. Since they're having some problems right now, they're going to take five. They're going to pause everything and go to the junction box over here. Might have tripped a relay or something. And once these relays get tripped, then they lose power. So now it looks like they're back in action. They've reset everything, and the crafts are back in action again. Here's Banneker coming around the first cone. Downs Creek is to the far side. You can see them. They just made it around their first cone. And there it looks like they're headed back towards the finish line. And it looks like Downs Creek will win this leg on the figure eight competition. They made it back to the starting line. Okay, let's see what, what's going on with Banneker over here. Looks like they're having a little bit of a technical difficulty. Uh, but looks like the, the bladder is full and they're ready to run. Okay, they're making it around that first cone. As you can see, like the fan in the back helps with direction. 
and the leaf blowers on their back. That gives you an excellent view of the craft up close and how it maneuvers and its power. See, they have a leaf blower up front for to fill the bladder, and then a fan and leaf blowers in the back for propulsion. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, these crafts are designed, built, and operated by the students. Banneker is almost back to the finish line. They've just got uh, about another 10 feet to go and they'll be across the finish line. moving at a slower pace right now but they are still moving and they're almost to the finish line and then once they cross the finish line the judges will do an update on the bracket board and Banneker just crossed the finish line and now we will go to the bracket board to see where we are in the competition okay we're headed over here to the bracket board as you can see the bra uh, bracket board is being updated with the teams that have just completed the figure eight competition. And the bracket board is set up just like your NCAA bracket where teams advance after they compete the competition. Uh, if they lose, they can still compete and make it towards a, a very successful overall competition. And while we're still waiting for Innovative Innovation Academy to set up for the figure eight competition, I'm just going to go over some of the design constraints for the competition. The hovercrafts must be built this year. Previous years, hovercrafts are not allowed. So, because some of these schools have been competing in this competition for years, and so to keep it fresh and fair, they, uh, the restraint requirements are that you cannot use a previously used craft because over the years, the, you know, students change and they come up with good ideas. So it's, this is a way to keep the competition fresh. Must be a maximum of two hovercrafts per school in the competition. So you can have one if you only have one, but no more than two. The hovercraft must be constructed with a maximum base size of 3 feet by 5 feet. Hovercrafts can be powered by electrical fans as you saw, leaf blowers as you saw. The crafts are limited to 4 devices maximum in any combination of fans and leaf blowers. The hovercrafts must, be, must use one extension cord per 2 devices. If using three or more devices, two extension cords must be used. There is a maximum of two extension cords per craft. Crafts can be battery powered, iPad driven, remote controlled, standard 120 volt AC, and a driver, the driver must, must, the driver weight must equal 125 pounds or more. There is one class of racing. High school and middle schools aren't separated. So the high school teams get to compete against the, the middle school teams and it makes for good competition. If a driver weighs less than 20, uh, 125 pounds, weight must will be added to the craft at the competition using weight room weights. So that's what the design constraints are. And it looks like we have two more teams competing here in the figure eight competition. And once they're ready, we will be off. So it's Innovative Academy and it looks like Northview High School. Like they're going over another. Okay, the judges look like they're ready here. 
Okay, so head to head right now is Innovation Academy and Chattahoochee. Chattahoochee just gave the thumbs up there already. Innovation looking like they're ready. As soon as the judges, the judges have given them the go ahead. Innovation is off already. And here comes Chattahoochee. They're coming down to the first cone. Chattahoochee is coming down to their first cone. Innovation has already rounded their first cone. Chattahoochee is rounding their first cone. Innovation Academy is headed back towards the starting line here. This is a pretty quick heat right here, ladies and gentlemen. Very few hiccups in this for Innovation Academy. And they are about to cross the finish line. So Innovation Academy will win this leg. They won that heat for the figure eight competition. And here's Chattahoochee. They've come around the first cone and they're headed back towards, looks like they have some difficulties here. All right, looks like they lost some power somewhere. Got your tech people looking at it to check it out and see what happened. Okay, looks like they're not gonna be able to finish this part of the competition on the crash power, so they're just carrying it off and they'll take it off to the side and do some troubleshooting. And while they're doing that, and we're setting up for the next part of the competition today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short pause. And while we're waiting for the next teams and events to be configured, I want to tell you a little bit about the man who is the brainchild behind this entire competition that has been going on for 15 years, and his name is Mr. Joseph Buffington. After graduating from East Hall High School, Mr. Buffington attended Georgia Tech and Southern Polytech State University and received an associate's degree in electronics and a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Prior to becoming a teacher, Mr. Buffington worked in the private sector as an electrical engineer in transmission line substation design. And so you can see how his experience has influenced his students in the design of their hovercrafts and the love for this technology that's in our world today. Mr. Buffington has been affiliated with Fulton County School, with the Fulton County, with the Fulton County School System since 2002 and has served as the engineering instructor at Benjamin Banneker High School, where students can choose from several engineering pathways, including subject matter from construction, communications, manufacturing, transportation, aerospace, energy power, and light. And these are the things as far as power, energy, transportation, aerospace, manufacturing, construction, all of these skills are used in the hovercraft competition design and build. So the things that he teaches in his class help the students to prepare for this competition and so that they can work on their crafts in his classroom. Mr. Buffington has also worked with the Georgia Department of Education to review and rewrite the state STEM standards for the engineering technology curriculum. He continues to work with ETS to review and rewrite the GACE test questions for anyone interested in becoming an engineering and technology instructor. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, he is the founder of the countywide hovercraft competition now in its 15th year. This competition is 100% engineering design at its finest. Being the student advisor for TSA, Mr. Buffington motivated his students to participate in CTSO programs like Hearst Robotics, Best Robotics, and Vex Robotics. So we're gearing up for the next leg of this competition, and we have Banneker High School competing in the figure eight, their second craft competing in the figure eight competition. 
And they're off, coming around the first leg of the competition. Fairground coming around that first cone. And it looks like Johns Creek is over on the far side trying to get theirs together too. So here we are around the first cone. Come and make, they make this next turn. And here's Johns Creek, they just came around. And Banneker just came around the first cone also. So now it's a race for the finish line. Both teams are approximately in the same position. And Banneker is headed towards the finish line. If they could just straighten up a little bit. All you have to do is head straight on to the finish line. They got about another 20 feet. Got about another 10 feet. Johns Creek is coming up pretty quick over there. But it looks like Banneker is going to win out. And Banneker has won that leg of the figure eight competition. Johns Creek is trying to finish up and cross the line, which they will in just a second here. Uh, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, that the maneuvering these hovercrafts is a whole lot more difficult than it appears. So while we're going to check the leaderboard again, it gets updated after each leg of each competition. And right now, as you can see, we're almost to the semifinals here. So we're looking pretty good right now, moving quite along with the competition. Almost halfway through here at Northview High School with five different schools competing. Once again, those schools are Banneker High School, Johns Creek High School, Innovative Academy, Chattahoochee High School, and Northview High School, which is hosting us. Northview is our host for this competition today. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the judge is ready. And they're off again. Banneker's second craft is in this competition. Still the figure eight competition that they're take that they're competing in. Gotta make it around that first cone. That's always the most difficult part, trying to get around that first cone. Because maneuvering the, the craft is not an easy thing. And here comes competition, making it around their, their first cone. It's important that the crew works together. You have the driver and then his team members who help keep the model electrical cord lengthy and not tangled so that they don't have any technical difficulties. Here we go. Banneker is coming around this cone. Sometimes the plugs come loose and you lose propulsion. But they're doing pretty good right now. Both teams are headed back towards the finish line. All Banneker has to do is follow Mr. Buffington in a straight line and cross the finish line. Which they are doing as we speak. They just crossed the finish line. Let's see what the other team is looking like right now. Looks like they have some technical difficulties too. So they decided to walk it out for the last part. The figure eight competition is a double elimination competition, so you, that's why you're seeing the teams compete more than once. You get a chance to move up if they can win one. Even if they lose one, they can win one and still move up. So right now we're going back to the leaderboard. That last race was Banneker and Chattahoochee back to one that race. Up on Gate County at Innovation Academy and John Street. 
I'm going to have two crabs, and the first one scratched. We have a circle to get the ball. I appreciate you all once again coming out to this uh, event. Hope you're having fun. Okay, that was Mr. Buffington talking about the leaderboard right now and explaining what happened in the last race. Innovation Academy is to the far side over here. This is Innovation Academy setting up. Looks like their bladder's full. That's some nice little blinking lights on their craft that you can see here. Because you can be as innovative as you'd like to. You know, spruce it up with some lights. I think one of the Banneker crafts actually has a honky horn on it. <laughs> I say that I mean a horn that goes honk honk little bubble horns that you see on the old bicycles you just squeeze the rubber part and it goes honk honk so there's a lot of innovation and imagination that goes into these crafts. As I said a lot of these students have been working on these crafts since uh, the spring I mean the fall semester so we're almost ready for this these next two to compete Innovation Academy. Okay, here we go. They're starting off. It looks like Johns Creek and Innovation Academy. And once again, Innovation Academy is hot out of the gate around that first cone. These guys are Got to make it around that first cone here. Sometimes the leaf blowers don't cooperate. <laughs> it's hard to steer. And it looks like Innovation Academy is headed back towards the finish line. Once again, they're going to be the first one across in their leg of the figure eight competition. So Innovation Academy has won that leg. Okay, there was a flag here on Downs Creek for, uh, for touching the cone. They might lose a, a point for that. Good. Okay. They're ready to bring it that back down the home stretch here. Banneker versus John Street. Banneker on deck. Banneker High School. Banneker High School. And while we're reconfiguring for the next competition, we're going to take a slight pause. So while we're waiting, we're back here. But while we're waiting for this next setup, uh, I'm going to just go over the rules again. I know you've heard them already, but it doesn't hurt to mention them again that the hovercraft must move under its own power. If the hovercraft stops moving while still having full power to the craft, the pilot must independently, independently get craft going with no team assistance. Hands and feet must remain in or on hovercraft at all times during competition. Team members are not allowed to touch the hovercraft during competition in any manner. Team members handling power cords must remain at least three feet from craft with slack in the cord at all times during competition and cannot pull hovercraft with the power cord. Team members are responsible for maintaining power to their craft. If the power cord becomes unplugged, it is the fault of the team. Teams may position one team member at the electrical distribution panel to prevent a power cord from being pulled out. Okay, we're going to get back to the action here, and I will be going over some more rules later on. But right now, it looks like we're going to have another head-to-head -head figure eight competition. And Banneker is on the far side this time. As you can see over here, they're on the far side setting up. Looks like they're testing their bladder to make sure it's full. Looks like they're just about ready. Looks like they're going against Johns Creek. Oh, no, this might even be Chattahoochee. Let me, let me double check my stats here. Okay, both teams are ready, though. Bladders are full. Judge has his hand up. Once he puts his hand down, 
Then the competition leg will start. He's holding, waiting on the team to give him a thumbs up. Okay, there he is, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Banneker to the far side, and here comes Chattahoochee. Chattahoochee is to your close side here. Banneker is to the far side. They're just about neck and neck here, as you can see. Looks like Banneker is going to turn that cone, turn around that cone first. Here comes Chattahoochee. Now I tell you, that first cone is always difficult. So here we go. Looks like Catahoochee has turned the corner, ready to set it up for the home stretch. And there they go. They're headed down. Banneker's moving again. It looks like they're having some technical difficulties over there, but Chattahoochee's headed back towards the finish line. It looks like they're going to be the first ones across this time. Sometimes you just got to work with your craft and get it to maneuver the way you want it to. And here we go. And they made it across first, so Chattahoochee wins that leg. Let's go back and check on Banneker and see how they're doing. Okay, they're still moving along, slowly but surely. Got a good line back towards the finish line there. You see a lot of team members helping out with cords. And you can see the design that you saw earlier on the Banneker craft. That first cone can be a little difficult. And Banneker just crossed the finish line. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the end of that leg. And now we're going back to the leaderboard, the bracket board, rather. And teams will be advancing here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to set up for one more race here with Innovation Academy and Johns Creek. So far, Innovation Academy is undefeated. They haven't lost a race today. Okay, okay, we are back setting up for this last bit of this portion of the competition with Johns Creek right here setting up and Innovation Academy over here who so far has not lost the race and even if they lose this race they still have an, an opportunity to uh, compete in the final round and still do an overall win it's a double elimination competition so both teams look like they're just check, double checking their bladders here to make sure that they're full and ready. It's part of their preparation for each competition, each race. Looks like both of them are ready. We're going to check on the judge. The judge is looking for the thumbs up. He just gave the hands down, so both teams are taking off right now. Here we go. Here we go. Johns Creek and Innovation Academy are both pretty much neck and neck, but of course, here we go. There's that breakaway from Innovation Academy. It went around the cone first. Johns Creek is trying to catch up. Something happened with their power. And now Innovation Academy is once again headed back towards the finish line. They're doing some swirling and twirling, but they're making their way back towards the finish line. Lights lit up all over there. Craft is a very nice craft. As you can see, they're just twirling and whirling and swirling as they head towards the finish line. Downs Creek has just made that turn around, and Chattahoochee just crossed the finish line, so here comes Downs Creek. And so since Innovation Academy won that one, they are, they've won this portion of the competition. All right, let's go check the leaderboard again. Order. Innovation 
That was the last race. And it makes him the candidate one first place. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard the Innovation Academy has just won first place in the competition. Okay, now is the trophy award ceremony about to take place. All the teams will gather around. Each school will be congratulated for their participation, which was a great competition today. Things don't always go perfectly, but they went very well today. So now we're about to have the presentation of the trophies and announce the winners. Okay, this is for the most technologically innovative team. All right, thank you guys for coming. This is always a good time, and I'm glad that my son gets to come and check it out. He definitely wants to do this kind of thing in the future. And thank you, Joseph, for doing this 15 years ago. It's an awesome event, and I'm glad you guys have a good time doing it. So we'll get to it. Best, we'll do best innovative, and this one's going to go to Innovation Academy. So Innovation Academy won best innovative. Here's a John's Creek just won Best Design. And thank you again for taking the training aid to be a sponsor of all 15 years of this event. Um, big supporters of the Here's a queue of John's Creek. And Innovation Academy to the far right. Downs Creek won second place for the street race. Innovation Academy came in first place. They had an outstanding record of 11 seconds. Chattahoochee High School won a trophy. Banneker High School just won a third place trophy. Johns Creek, second place. And Innovation Academy has won first place for the overall competition. And right now they're going to pass out medals for participation. Everyone will receive a medal for participation. And they're about to take group, uh, group picture for all of the teams that competed here today. Said that uh, the classmen range from freshmen to juniors. So with the amount of members that we have on the team this year and how it's spread out, we expect to be competing at a very high level and doing this with some really good competition for years to come. And we want to thank Mr. Buffington once again for putting this together 15 years ago. He's the one who came up with this, put it together, and it's been running ever since. Each year the competition, uh, except for with COVID, would go from one side of the county to the other, like we'll do north side, south side, and just alternate each year. So this year was on the north side, so willingly we'll be on the south side next year. And 
Here's a picture of everyone who competed today. Quite a few participants here. This is a good comeback after having dealt with COVID and being out of competition for the last two years. So we're glad that all these young people could attend this and the adults that helped them out. We're very grateful for everyone's participation. That's Corey Russell on the ones and twos over there, y'all. Always somebody putting in some good stuff for us. Always with us no matter what we're doing. Hangs out with us at, at Banneker and follows us up here to make sure that we have some nice music to accompany our competition today. Corey Russell, ladies and gentlemen. On, uh, on film over here before we shut all of this down, pack it up, and head back down to our home base. While we're doing that, we're going to take a short pause, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're at the at the end of another fantastic race competition event here at uh, Northview, a 15th annual Fulton County Hovercraft competition. In the background, you hear one of the crowds still performing out there on the floor, and uh, it's been a fantastic event. Innovation Academy here in the Fulton County won first place. Bamaka High School, the, the school where I teach at, we came in third place. Uh, all the students had fun, and they uh, had engineering at its finest, and we hope to do this again next year at Bannica High School.